a woman accompanied her husband to the doctor's office. After his checkup, the doctor called the wife into his office alone. He said, your husband is suffering from a very severe stress disorder. If you don't do the following, your husband will surely die. Each morning, fix him a healthy breakfast, be pleasant at all times. For lunch, make him a nutritious meal. For dinner, prepare an especially nice meal for him. Don't burden him with chores. Don't discuss your problems with him. It will only make his stress worse. No nagging, and most importantly, make love with your husband several times a week. If you can do this for the next 10 months to a year, I think your husband will regain his health completely. On the way home, the husband asked his wife, what did the doctor say? He said, you're going to die, she replied. <laughs> a gynecologist had become fed up with malpractice insurance and was on the verge of being burned out. Hoping to try another career where skillful hands would be beneficial, he decided to change careers and become a mechanic. He found out from the local technical college what was involved, signed up for evening classes, attended diligently, and learned all he could. When the time for the practical exam approached, the gynecologist prepared carefully for weeks and completed the exam with tremendous skill. When the results came back, he was surprised to find that he had received a score of 150%. Fearing an error, he called the instructor, saying, I don't want to appear ungrateful for such an outstanding result, but I wondered if there had been an error which needed adjusting. The instructor said, During the exam, you took the engine apart perfectly, which was worth 50% of the total mark. You put the engine back together again perfectly, which is also worth 50% of the mark. The instructor went on to say, I gave you an extra 50%, because you did all of it through the muffler. <laughs> a drunk gets up from the bar and heads for the bathroom. A few minutes later, a loud, blood-curdling scream is heard from the bathroom. A few minutes after that, another loud scream reverberates through the bar. The bartender goes into the bathroom to investigate why the drunk is screaming. What's all the screaming about in there? You're scaring the customers. I'm just sitting here on the toilet, and every time I try to flush, something comes up and squeezes the hell out of my testicles. With that, the bartender opens the door, looks in and says, You idiot! You're sitting on the mop bucket. <laughs> Steve went into a pharmacy and asked to talk to a male pharmacist. The woman he was talking to said that she was the pharmacist and that she and her sister owned the store, so there were no males employed there. She then asked if she could help him. Steve said that it was something that he would be much more comfortable discussing. With a male pharmacist, the female pharmacist assured him that she was completely professional and whatever it was that he needed to discuss, he could be confident that she would treat him with the highest level of professionalism. Steve agreed and began by saying, this is tough for me to discuss, but I have a permanent erection. It causes me a lot of problems and seva embarrassment. So I was wondering what you could give me for it. The pharmacist said, just a minute, I'll go talk to my sister. When she returned, she said, we discussed it at length and the absolute best we can do, one third ownership of the shop, a company car and $3,000 a month living expenses. <laughs> Steve was walking down the street when he was accosted by a particularly dirty and shabby-looking homeless man who asked him for a couple of dollars for dinner. Steve took out his wallet, extracted ten dollars, and asked, If I give you this money, will you buy some beer with it instead? No, I had to stop drinking years ago, the homeless man replied. Will you use it to gamble instead of buying food? Steve asked. No, I don't gamble, the homeless man said. I need everything I can get just to stay alive. Will you spend this on greens fees at a golf course instead of food? Steve asked. Are you nuts? replied the homeless man. I haven't played golf in 20 years. Will you spend the money on a woman in the red light district instead of food? Steve asked. What disease would I get for 10 lousy bucks? exclaimed the homeless man. Well, said Steve, 
I'm not going to give you the money. Instead, I'm going to take you home for a terrific dinner cooked by my wife, Colette. The homeless man was astounded. Won't Colette be furious with you for doing that? I know I'm dirty, and I probably smell pretty disgusting, Steve replied. That's okay. I just want her to see what a man looks like who's given up beer, gambling, golf, and sex. <laughs> John O'Reilly hoisted his beer and said, Here's to spending the rest of me life, between the legs of me wife. That won him the top prize at the pub for the best toast of the night. He went home and told his wife, Mary, I won the prize for the best toast of the night. She said, Aye. Did you now? And what was your toast? John said, Here's to spending the rest of me life, sitting in church beside me wife. Oh, that is very nice indeed, John, Mary said. The next day, Mary ran into one of John's drinking buddies on the street corner. The man chuckled leeringly and said, John won the prize the other night at the pub with a toast about you, Mary. She said, Aye, he told me, and I was a bit surprised myself. You know, he's only been there twice in the last four years. Once he fell asleep, and the other time I had to pull him by the ears to make him come. <laughs> it's the spring of 1957, and Bobby goes to pick up his date. He's a pretty hip guy, with his own car. When he goes to the front door, the girl's father answers and invites him in. Carrie's not ready yet, so why don't you have a seat? He says. That's cool, says Bobby. Carrie's father asks Bobby what they're planning to do. Bobby replies politely that they will probably just go to the soda shop or a movie. Carrie's father responds, Why don't you two go out and screw? I hear all the kids are doing it. Naturally, this comes as quite a surprise to Bobby, so he asks Carrie's dad to repeat it. Yeah, says Carrie's father. Carrie really likes to screw. She'll screw all night if we let her. Well, this just made Bobby's eyes light up, and his plan for the evening was beginning to look pretty good. A few minutes later, Carrie comes downstairs in her little poodle skirt and announces that she's ready to go. Almost breathless with anticipation, Bobby escorts his date out the front door. About 20 minutes later, Carrie rushes back into the house, slams the door behind her, and screams at her father, Damn it, Daddy, it's called the twist. <laughs> dating versus marriage. When you are dating, farting is never an issue. When you are married, you make sure there's nothing flammable near your husband at all times. When you are dating, he takes you out to have a good time. When you are married, he brings home a six pack and says, what are you going to drink? When you are dating, he holds your hand in public. When you are married, he flicks your ear in public. When you are dating, a single bed for two isn't that bad. When you are married, a king-size bed feels like an army cot. When you are dating, you are turned on at the sight of him naked. When you are married, you think to yourself, was he always this hairy? When you are dating, you enjoyed foreplay. When you are married, you tell him, if we have sex, will you leave me alone? When you are dating, he hugs you when he walks by you for no reason. When you are married, he grabs your boob any chance he gets. When you are dating, you picture the two of you together, growing old together. When you are married, you wonder who will die first. When you are dating, just looking at him makes you feel all mushy. When you are married, when you look at him, you want to claw his eyes out. When you are dating, he knows what the hamper is. When you are married, the floor will suffice as a dirty clothes storage area. When you are dating, he understands if you aren't in the mood. When you are married, he says, it's your job. When you are dating, he understands that you have male friends. When you are married, he thinks they are all out to steal you away. When you are dating, he likes to discuss things. When you are married, he develops a blank stare. <laughs> My friends, if you want to watch other funny jokes, subscribe to the channel.